On Thursday, Apple held their keynote event at the Steve Jobs Theater. Welcome to the Steve Jobs Theater. And they released a bunch of new phones, as well as a new Apple Watch. This is a huge day for iPhone. We now have iPhone XS, XS Max, and XR. At this point, there's a trend developing with these keynotes. It all takes place on YouTube. Before the event, you have speculation, you have leaks. This is your in-depth look at the new iPhone. But it doesn't stop there. More speculation and more leaks. Finally, you have the event. Wow, well fucking play, Tim! And then after, it's followed by reviews. It's not good enough. Unboxings, first impressions. Actually, it looks incredible. And let's not forget all the parodies. The new iPhone X, are you a peasant? Jax Films, you were really fast with that one. That was so funny. So good. That's it. Oh, yeah, not too much. Every one of these Apple events creates huge viewership on YouTube and dominates the conversation. But the general consensus over the past few years is that the keynote is kind of underwhelming. The headlines from this week pretty much sum it up. It felt more like a two hour lecture than it ever has before. The CPU, the GPU, or the neural engine. When Apple first started hosting these events, the company was innovating and bringing us products that changed our lives drastically. There it is, right there. So as much as the products were revolutionary, so too were the keynotes. They were themselves an innovation at the time and something that Apple really excelled at. But for a company that has a history of innovation like Apple, why have they not innovated the keynote? Now clearly, Steve Jobs is a huge part of the reason why these keynotes were so successful in the past, and you cannot replace a Steve Jobs. But it actually looks like YouTubers are doing a pretty good job of filling in. Let us explain. It's a, uh, let's break this down. We gotta keep oh, the breakdown okay. thing going. Uh, yeah, I yeah. mean, all right, let's, let's break this down. First, let's look at a quick history of the keynote. The first time that video was used to present their products in this way was at a shareholder event in 1984 with none other than Steve Jobs. For the first time ever, I'd like to let Macintosh speak for itself. A year later, Jobs resigned from the company after being ousted by the board. And it wasn't until he returned to Apple in 1997 that we saw the Apple events as we know them today. I'm trying to get back to the basics. Great products, great marketing, and my computer just died. This is a bad omen. We need a new computer. New computer. Thank you. All right. In 1998, Steve Jobs unveiled the iMac. This is iMac. This product was a massive success and basically saved the company from bankruptcy. What went wrong at Apple? Oh gosh. This computer defined my childhood. It was elementary school. It probably wasn't for you. Maybe for well, some of you. Maybe for some of you. When did you guys use this computer? In 2001, Jobs announced the first iPod, revolutionizing the music industry. And in 2007, he announced the first iPhone. Thank you for coming. We're gonna make some history together today. Which changed everything. Wait, let me check. What? What are you checking? I'm looking it up. What are you looking at? Yeah, it changed everything. Oh, yeah. Actually, our first video to ever cross 100,000 views was shot on an iPhone. In 2010, he announced the iPad. And in June of 2011, Steve Jobs hosted his last event in front of a sold out crowd. It always <laughs> Thank you. Later that year, Steve Jobs passed away. He never accepted the merely good. He would only accept great, insanely great. And in 2012, Tim Cook and the rest of the Apple team took over the presentations. In 2015, there was a film written by Aaron Sorkin that told the story of Steve Jobs through three keynote addresses. It just goes to show you that Steve Jobs and the keynote go hand in hand. There is no keynote without Steve Jobs. It is the honor of a lifetime to be the first to welcome you to the Steve Jobs Theater. So it's obvious that Jobs played a huge part in making the keynotes what they are. He was a charismatic storyteller that has proven to be irreplaceable. Thank you very much. There's an article in Inc. Magazine. The article breaks down what made this event the greatest keynote of all time. So we're gonna pair this article with some clips of YouTubers to help prove our point that YouTubers are really filling in in Jobs' absence. I know. I'm shook. Number one, Jobs was just a great storyteller. He understood that you need to have a good setup. You need to elicit a reaction that immediately makes you want to hear more. Every once in a while, a revolutionary product comes along that changes everything. This is basically like titles and thumbnails on YouTube. You have to get people interested before they even really know what they're about to watch. 
Number two, Jobs understood audience retention, and he made you wait for the payoff. Actually, here it is, but we're gonna leave it there for now. YouTubers know this extremely well. This is basically like watch time on YouTube. How do you get people to stay from point A to point B? Number three, he always knew when to use comedy. Today, Apple is going to reinvent the phone. And here it is. <laughs> In this keynote alone, he made people laugh over 51 times. We have invented a new technology, and boy, have we patented it. <laughs> so, I wonder how many times I've made people laugh. Like 51 times in your life? Oh, wow, that wasn't funny. <laughs> I feel so uncomfortable right I'm now. Like <laughs> All right, moving on. <laughs> Number four, Jobs always made sure there was a villain. Here's four smartphones, right? Motorola Q, the Blackberry, Palm Treo, Nokia E62, the usual suspects. And in the keynote on Thursday, they didn't talk about any of the competitors. But their competitors sure have a lot to say about them. On YouTube, we see this tactic used a lot. Did they invite me to the event? Maybe because I tell it like it is, I don't know. Thank you very much, Tim Cook. I mean, primarily it's used in like diss tracks, but it's also used between YouTubers when there's beef, and that type of drama really elevates conflict and makes you really interested in the storyline. I mean, Android versus iOS? I do carry an iPhone. Oh, Usually. can you believe this? Logan Paul versus KSI? I mean, drama, conflict between two people having a hero and a villain, that is just great storytelling. And Jobs knew how to utilize this. So do YouTubers. Number five, he spoke to us like we were people. Literally half the store is devoted to solutions. People don't just want to buy personal computers anymore. They want to know what they can do with them. He told us about the products and how they would affect our daily lives. This is the core of YouTube. I use a lot of tech and being a user first is what gives me a pretty good perspective. YouTube is all about that human connection. Congratulate Niles on upgrading from his 6S. This, this is a big deal for him. Take a look at how Casey explained drones to us earlier this year. The price puts them, well, the price puts them right in the middle here. And now take a look at how Steve Jobs explained smartphones in 2007. This is what iPhone is, okay? They're both basically bringing something that might feel overwhelming and confusing and bringing it to eye level with us. Sound good? Great. Sound good, sound good. Oh, and one more thing. He always surprised us. He was really good at keeping secrets. He and kept, oh sorry, I thought that was my time. What the f He kept the original iPhone a secret for two and a half years. He was asked if Apple was gonna get into phones and he straight up lied and said, we're not good at that. But today, leak culture has changed everything and now YouTubers are the first one to release the news. 64 gigabytes and it will start at $700. They're actually the ones that surprise us, not Apple. The reality is I'd rather have Marquez Brownlee explain to me the new iPhone and have iJustine tell me about how the Apple Watch can be a part of my daily life than watch the whole keynote. So we're not saying they should completely get rid of the keynote. I poured myself another glass of whiskey. This is getting too lit so fast. It's clearly a symbiotic relationship for both parties. But they should play more to their strengths. Apple is really strong in video. They still dominate the product video. Like those videos about the products get me so hyped. So they should figure out somehow how they can pair their strength in video with YouTubers, bring it together, and launch the product to us in a new innovative way that somewhat resembles what we used to experience with Apple products. Hello, I am Macintosh. So let us know what did you think of the keynote and how do you think Apple can improve upon what they're doing right now? Also, did you use those computers with the colors on them? Yeah, because those were like, those make me so nostalgic. Yeah, like, I, we should get one of those in here. We should get one of those in here. Yeah. All right, we'll see you next Sunday.